Hello grade 12, uh, welcome to my channel and let's teach you something perhaps to benefit you in your quest in passing your NBT examinations and even for maths in general if you are a matriculant or somebody who is considering to upgrade their math mark and essentially this video is going to bore some people who really don't like knowledge <laughs> because they only want answers, I'm not here for that I'm going to use this to teach you what maths principles can actually guide you to maximize on what you get. All right. And the most important thing, guys, is if you find these videos helpful, there's more in this channel. Rather subscribe so that you can get more access to other videos. Because usually, if you're not subscribed, what YouTube will do will probably show you the most popular videos and perhaps what if those ones are not useful in enhancing your knowledge and understanding of the subject. So rather subscribe so that you can see the whole package and then learn as much as you can. All right. Remember when you subscribe, you're not just making me popular if you think that's the case. And essentially, I, don't, I really don't care to be popular or to be recognized. What I care to do is to enhance somebody's child or somebody's you know quest in becoming a better individual in the right direction so that is just my intention of course on my part it's just an attempt there's no guarantees all right so what is going to happen guys on the description i'm going to make a pdf of this video okay i mean sorry not this video but these questions i'm going to put a pdf in the description so you can download it also, the memo that I'm writing after proofreading it and checking it for correctness, because at times in the heat of the moment, mistakes do okay or certain things get left out or they become distorted. I only notice once the video is out, then I may have made some corrections on the um, answer so that it's the most correct and the best possible way it can be expressed. All right. So these are also free for you to download. Okay. Check the description box, you will find this there. Otherwise, let's have a look at these questions and see how best can someone answer questions of this nature. So we are given the expression 3 minus x all squared multiplied by minus 4 over x and that to be less than 0. So how do you begin this kind of an a technical question so there's three ways obviously for someone to consider when given algebraic expressions essentially it is by inspection so inspection is the most basic instinct for any individual even when you see someone new before you make them your friend or whatever you look at them and you look at them good to try and understand what you're dealing with and also to make deductions based on your present and past experiences and knowledge and whatever. And on top of that, you want to make a conclusion whether this is for you or not. All right. So inspection is key. So if we inspect algebraic expressions, we want to determine what direction they take essentially. So let's look at this expression. If we look at this expression, 3 minus x. So we're starting our inspection here. 3 minus x all squared. This is a perfect square. And for a perfect square where variables are included, this expression is always positive or it is equal to 0. Okay, great. So this expression is positive when x is an element of real numbers okay this though needs to exclude something it means x cannot be equal to 3 this is when we are saying it has to be positive okay and this expression is 0 when x is equal to three okay great so this is what we want to know <coughs> it is always positive when x is an element of real numbers that means we need to exclude x is equal to three because it gives us zero i'm just giving you how you break down these kinds of problems all right 
So we're done with this expression. Now remember, we are looking at this expression in isolation at the moment. Next one is the next expression that we are multiplying this to. So we know that we've got minus 4 divided by x. Now this expression essentially has some very unique properties. All right. What we will notice is that here x is essentially taking any value, meaning x is an element of real numbers. I don't know what I'm doing now. But there is a problem. With a fraction, we cannot divide by zero. So that means as much as x can take any real value, but x cannot be equal to zero for this to be a valid algebraic expression. Okay, that's good. Now we are looking at these expressions in isolation. Now let's have a look. This expression can be positive when x is less than zero, right? Because a negative divided by another negative it gives us a positive answer, okay? This expression is negative when x is greater than zero. That's also very great. So now this is very key because to answer questions of this nature, one needs to focus on the signs and look at the critical values involved to get the best answer out of this situation. Now we've got to link all of this together in the original expression to make the right impressions. Now let's have a look. We are saying this expression multiplied by the next one, it has to be negative. So now what are the restrictions that are imposed here? The restrictions imposed is this one. X must be, must not be equal to three. Why? Because when we say X is three, this becomes zero. Zero multiplied by any number is going to give us zero and zero is not included in our inequality so that means we need to disregard all of this okay maybe let me not take it out so what i can do is just to say this segment is to be essentially cut out right right and we can see that this then says this expression is forever positive in this governing body. Now remember this is the ANC. This is the party in power. Okay? So whatever we do we need to satisfy the governor general, right? So there it is. So to satisfy our governor general x cannot be 3 because we don't want that expression to be 0 because it then defeats the inequality. Alright? Number 1. Number 2 we are saying essentially this is always positive. That's what you could gather from this expression. Now we are integrating the individual parameters of this expression to the expression given in general, all right? Or as at least specifically for that question. Now too, we come here and say, look, we cannot have a situation where X is zero because this expression becomes undefined. And now this entire thing becomes undefined. So this is a restriction to consider. But x can take any other real value for that matter. But now we realize that the first expression is forever positive according to this expression. Therefore, it means this one must be negative. So this is again what comes out. And that means we cannot take that expression to be positive. That one gets cut out because we still need to satisfy the inequality. So now from this inspection, guys, we need to play a very nice game now and say, look, we know that we are essentially multiplying red with this green, right? And we are saying the answer must be negative. Remember, this is all about signs. Now let's have a look. This is forever positive, we established, because based on this expression and its natural characteristics, it will always be positive in an expression like that for this to be valid. Secondly, we can see that this guy needs to be negative and it only becomes negative when x is greater than zero. So this must be negative because a positive multiplied by negative is a negative. So this little thing here essentially speaks to our governing body. That means 
If this is the case, then we are abiding by the law laid down for us. But now how do we solve the problem? We know that technically x cannot be 3, right? Right, but x can take any other real value. That means x can be less than 3. It can be greater than 3, but it should not be 3. But also we can appreciate that x has to be greater than 0 for the next expression. So literally, this means we can say safely x must be less than 3, greater than 0, or x must be greater than 3. Because the critical values give us the right intervals to consider to satisfy the constraint given to us or to at least abide by that law fully. Now we look at the options given to us. We will appreciate that, look, this is good, but it's not complete. But this one is more complete because it actually speaks sense. This one, the reason it is not exactly correct is because it negates the fact that we need to exclude x values that are greater than zero. But of those x values, we need to exclude x is equal to three. So as a result, this becomes the best answer. So in this kind of questions, you don't choose the correct answer per se, but you choose the best answer, at least one that speaks to the law laid down for us. So guys, inspection is very good. Of course, I'm taking time to explain but to a math student, this is easy. You can do this in one second or even less than a full minute. Okay, not one second, but you can do this in a matter of seconds before a full minute. And that means in the next minute, you are just writing down your answer. But I'm taking time now to take you through it step by step so that you can understand what needs to happen. So what do we mean by inspection? You solve this by inspection. So simplified algebraic expressions make you to be able to make inspections and deductions and as a result you can just play with some natural characteristics of certain expressions and then speak sense into the original okay so that is what is important guys so it's all about signs questions like this is signs all right that's the first way of answering so that means our answer here becomes d Okay, and if you looked in this book, they chose C and that was incorrect. Okay, because it's not completely speaking sense for the inequality given. Remember, every answer we need to give must satisfy fully the expression at hand. This is the law and as a citizen, you have to abide by the law for you to be considered a good citizen. All right, that's number one, guys. So let's look at the option B. What can we do? We can use the table. Now, I call this an algebraic table because I don't know what it is called, but this is the table of signs. Perhaps you can even say here, this is the table of signs because usually signs are the target to solve the problem, okay? So let's have a look what happens. Well, with the table, we just take any binomial factors that we have. Usually binomial factors work best, but essentially anything. We've got three squared, and then we've got minus four over x. Okay, that's very great. So that's what we have, guys. So we just put them as they, as, as they are onto our table. Then obviously we separate the table. We need to find critical values, right? Right. So I teach this very well in my videos. If you watch most of my videos available to you. So here we are doing the product because we saw that these were being multiplied into this, right? Now let's have a look. We always need to find the critical values. So we equate this to zero and solve for x, we get three. We equate this to zero, then everything goes haywire. But that means zero is a critical thing. Not in Not romantic, eh? Uncle romantic, sir. It's not Now the next one is 
when is this essentially going to be zero when x is three we always try to target the zeros then what happens we can see this is a perfect square therefore it will always be positive if it is not zero so that means we know that if x takes any other value then it becomes positive entirely again this is because there's two binomial factors here side by side so don't worry about other things now we come to the next one and say look when will this be zero well it can never be zero but we know that when x is zero it is undefined so write ud and then what happens when x is greater than zero we know that this becomes negative because it's going to be positive divided by a so it's going to be negative divided by positive so it becomes negative even if it's three or anywhere else but values less than zero that means the denominator is also negative then that whole thing becomes positive because it becomes a positive sorry a negative divided by another negative so that is the story now we do the product because this is where our answers are going to be read off the product is positive multiplied by positive is a positive positive multiplied by undefined will always be undefined positive multiplied by negative is negative zero multiplied by any number is zero then positive multiplied by negative um, what is going to be the case it's negative okay now where our ans where are our answers we know that this one is undefined so it's an open circle three also gives us zero again according to our inequality this should be less than zero so it is not accommodating anything but now where is the other solutions now can you see in between this is negative we connect that with the bar and the other side is negative so that is where our answers are it's there and there all right so how do we write our final answer we can say x must be less than three greater than zero or x must be greater than three and now looking at the options the best answer is this one because we need to satisfy our law correctly so guys this algebraic table works please find a way of knowing how to use it because it can simplify your life greatly all right let's do the one last technique that i would like to show you guys so let's say c is going to be the graphical method remember knowledge of functions is very key now with functions if you are given this x if you are given this 3 minus x all squared into minus 4 over x and this is to be less than 0 what does it look like graphically this looks like we have a function f of x is equal to 3 minus x all squared and we've got another function say g of x is equal to minus 4 over x can you see so this is a parabola so as you can see our f of x here is basically a parabola okay but what type of a parabola when you multiply that out we get a positive x squared that means our a value is greater than zero and this is a smiling parabola but now if we look at this more clearly we will see that this is a perfect square so it means we've got equal roots so this is a parabola with equal roots and if there's equal roots this implies that the x-intercept is also the turning point so this is things guys you need to be aware of i'm just highlighting them for your benefit obviously you know this already but you probably didn't think about it to this extent and this is why at times you find yourself struggling with these kinds of questions when they pop in in your exam or even in the nbt all right so guys that is all about that graph 
So that's all we can say. So essentially, we look at this graph and say, what is this graph here of G? This is a hyperbola. Right? What type of a hyperbola? We know that A here is less than zero. Don't know what I'm doing there. And if A is less than zero, and this being a basic hyperbola, it already gives us the shape that this graph is in the second quadrant and fourth quadrant. So it's there and there. So that gives us the shape of our hyperbola. So this is basically our basic hyperbola. That four really doesn't play much. And that means asymptotes are the x-axis themselves. And that's all. So this literally is what we can say. And we don't want to say too much. X is an element of real numbers here. But essentially it cannot take zero. As well as Y is an element of real numbers. But cannot take zero. Because these become asymptotes. So with that knowledge in mind, now we need to draw the sketch so that we can make a deduction that answers the question. Okay guys, so this is what these graphs would look like. Again, you should be able to draw these graphs effortlessly without doing calculations. Looking at the expressions, this should be clear and easy. Again, I always try to draw the most accurate of the sketches you can find because it helps me to make sense of things. So those little easy things like that, they catch up with you when you get to questions of this nature. So don't learn bad habits, guys. No matter how convenient they can be, don't be complacent, please. Anyway, let's have a look here. What, what can we gather from here? We can see that our parabola is positive and it's positive on that side and it's zero at x is equal to three. But our hyperbola is positive on this end and it's negative on that end because remember, this is a game of signs. So now what can we see here? We will notice that again, we still need to reconcile a situation where we are taking this and we are multiplying with the blue. <laughs> we are multiplying with the blue. And we are saying this must be negative. Let's give us a minus. Now we can see that the parabola is essentially positive according to the expression. Remember the governing expression? It says the parabola is positive. We don't want where it is zero. So this is fixed. It's positive. But this other one is variable. But again, the expression gives it away that this must be negative. So it can only happen if this is negative. So this means this is going to work. So now where is this situation taking place? It's taking place here. Look, we see that zero cannot be included. It's a critical value there. And we've got three, but three gives us zero. So zero doesn't satisfy our inequality. So this is an open circle. But now what happens in between these critical values? We will see that the parabola is positive, the hyperbola is negative, and therefore we connect this with the bar. And that speaks to our solutions. What happens beyond three? We can see that as we go in this direction, what is the case? The parabola is positive, the hyperbola is negative, and that satisfies the inequality. That is the case. But now what happens after zero? We will see that both of them are positive and that product becomes positive. So this is the forbidden fruit. We must not eat that one. So again, we write the same conclusion at the end of it all. We say, well, we appreciate that our x must be less than 3, greater than 0, or our x must be greater than 3. But again, we look at the options provided. That becomes the answer that actually speaks to the government, okay, or the law. <laughs> so we have to be law-abiding citizens. So guys, these are things you can do in a split second. Believe me when I tell you this. Okay, not a split second, but a split minute. Maybe I'm making it too quick. So be careful of also the memorandums that you get. 
also make sure you understand what the memo is giving. It's not always correct. Remember, these are human beings that will make mistakes like they did in this case. If you look in that book, the solution to this problem is C, and that's incorrect with confidence because we've looked at it in three different ways, and those three different ways cannot come to a conclusion that this is incorrect, and yet this should be the best answer. The only reason, though, this is incorrect is because it does not exclude three, and yet three affects how this expression looks, and we need to always satisfied okay guys i went about it as tedious as possible but i'm just trying to emphasize the fact that these are the learning points for you when you practice to realize either than just going through the motions and trying to find the quickest answer you'll never succeed with maths if that is your approach because you'll always want someone to do it for you than to actually learn how to do it for yourself so that is the most important thing. Please, folks, learn to be independent. Don't depend even on me. I'm just a human being who is as flawed as any other that you know. So please don't rely on me more than you should be relying on yourself. And obviously, you can learn from me as much as I can also learn from you. So the idea is for us to improve each other's state. So again, we are given this expression, so we need to solve it. So once you see radicals or sets, there's a few rules here. Rule number one. Rules, rules, rules. Now, rule number one is that we need to use prime factors. Two, we need to understand the order of operations. Okay, and the order of operations is basically board mass. And how do we do this board mass? We do it always, or it's applied in reverse. Okay, always in reverse, or should we say we do inverse ops? Okay. Order of operations, it's board mass. Okay? Somewhere else, you would see PEMDAS, meaning parentheses, ordinals. Ordinals means powers, basically. That is a number to some exponent. Then division, multiplication, addition, and subtraction. So, and the way this is put is such that you always undo. That's why I'm saying we're doing the reverse operations. Reverse operations. Or you can even call it inverse operations because you are always undoing it. If you are given multiplication, you undo it by doing division. If you have given addition you always undo it with subtraction if you're given subtraction you undo it with addition and so forth <clears throat> with ordinals if you're given exponents you take a square root if you're given a square root you reverse it into exponents parentheses <clears throat> are basically factorization so that is division on its own parentheses essentially means division then how do you undo division by multiplying so these are some of the things guys that need to be clear in your brain okay this needs to be your toolbox if you are to consider yourself a mechanic but <clears throat> i'm a surgeon so i would call these my instruments all right <clears throat> let's go on guys what do we do we use prime factors here so we can see this is 3 12 split into its prime factors this is 3 times 4. Of course, 4 is not a prime number. And, okay, maybe let's, let's refine our rules here a little bit. Because we said use prime factors, but perfect squares are also key. So we can say prime factors. We balagatl infanam prime. Factors and perfect squares. All 
Of course, sometimes you don't always win, but this is the key, yes. And then minus, we can say this is going to be the prime number 3 multiplied by the perfect square 9 over 24 is a bit tricky because now 24 we cannot multiply any perfect square to 24 so this becomes 3 times 8 okay 8 can be split into its prime factors and a perfect square which is 2 times 4 so obviously you don't have a calculator so you can't use shift fact but if you are doing this in the standard exam dbe exams you can just take these numbers and say that number equal sign it gives you that number then you go shift fact and then it gives you all the prime factors in the best way possible even perfect squares come out nicely there so you are sorted but now this is for nbt no calculator unfortunately so again Square root of two numbers multiplying each other, it's the same as taking the square root of 4 multiplied by taking the square root of 3. So square root of 4 is 2. 2 times the number outside is going to be 6 root 3. Minus square root of 9 is 3 multiplied by the square root of 3. Divided by here square root of 4 is 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 3 because those are prime numbers and then look at the stuff that happens we simplify further these are like terms now can you see board mass kicks in these are like terms now what happens we, we handle them 6 root 3 minus 3 root 3 is 3 root 3 divided by 2 times square root 2 times square root 3. Again, we can see now we have set up ourselves for division. And division, those ones take care of each other. And then we remain with 3 divided by 2 square root of 2. Do we see an answer like that? We see A is our option like that so basically this means this is the answer okay don't ask me why the others are not correct this is how it went but at times you can do all of this nicely get to this answer and find that it's not here so sometimes you may have to rationalize the denominator sometimes you may have to change the approach delay certain steps as you go along here because Math is all a game of being away and essentially using every trick there is. Others are not even written as tricks in the book, but somebody, when they were sitting at home, they realized this is what can happen and then they decide, well, if I could think of it, any, anybody who's doing maths at this particular level must also be able to do it. And let's throw it in. As unfair as it may look at times, sometimes the best way to go about it so guys knowing how to deal with problems is very key because then that means you can try your best every time knowing very well that you can square mark unfortunately in nbt it's either the correct option or not so the steps are not really an important issue okay let me not say they're not an important issue but they're not really the examination <laughs> But we know that if you can get the right answer, then you went about it the right way, isn't it? So that's the idea here. Okay, guys, there's not much I can say here. Just know some rules. Know some rules. The law. You need to know the law. Okay. Great. Let's move on to question 27. Now, question 27 is again that ugly expression this gives you a headache if you look at it but let's break it down nicely you know most we are the masters of our own fate if you don't master your fate well thank you very much you are digging your own grave and we'll just gladly bury you this is 2 minus into x minus 3 all squared all of this divided by 3 to the exponent x. Uh, 
this is to be less than or equal to zero all right so what do we do here guys again inspect 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 what do we see here we see that there is x which is standalone and x is literally an element of real numbers okay and then we've got this lovely expression here it's an algebraic expression and it's a parabola the basic parabola shifted down by four units okay no middle term and that means the y-intercept is also the turning point okay that's key and that means this is our minimum value because the coefficient of this parabola i mean of this x squared in this parabola is positive but then we look at it we look at this again and say what are you well if we look at this one we will see that this is also a parabola mm -hmm. but now in the vertex form but they just didn't put it in a way you could quickly recognize it this is the turning point form and essentially we can see that this sign here already is speaking some vibes that a is less than zero and it means a grumpy face parabola and that means the maximum value remember now this two here becomes the maximum value so two is the a when we happy can you see the maximum value of this thing is minus two and that means this entire expression is negative it's a negative expression or at least all the y values of this parabola are negative so this already says look we are seeing something that says this entire expression is negative because we can see the maximum value is a negative number of course recognizing this is a parabola now let's finish our inspection we will then appreciate that this is a power of base 3 to the exponent x and now this power when its base is greater than 1 x is an element of real numbers this will always be positive okay and it's an increasing function so as x increases this function increases as x decreases this function decreases simple and straightforward but it never gets to zero okay our inspection gives us the idea that look this is also always positive that is negative this is an element of real numbers now the problem is this guy this guy can be positive can be negative can be zero right right so now our main issue is this one can you see when you inspect you narrow down your problems to just one dude this is the only dude that can give us a headache for this to be sorted now let's have a look guys method a this is inspection we've already done this but integrating uh, ideas and topics now by inspection let's start if we look at x x is an element of real numbers meaning it can take any value do we have any restrictions no because x stand alone this is what it means there's nothing we can say obviously we're looking at this alone at this point then we look at this next one this is x squared minus four this is a parabola right a smiling parabola but let's look at it as an expression now as an algebraic expression what happens when x values increase this function may increase may not increase it will depend on the critical values so we know that this we can simplify this is a difference of two squares it's x minus two into x plus two so now we can start to talk because like this you can't really say much yes you can say a lot it's a smiling face minimum value is minus four but what then but with this we can say what can happen here now we know that from this expression we can tell that when this expression is zero when x is equal to two or x is equal to minus two it will be zero and we can see that let's choose now values less than minus two for example values less than minus two what do they do here this becomes negative 
this becomes negative and a negative times a negative is a positive. So we know that this graph is positive when x is less than minus 2. Or let's say now values between the two. When we look at the values between the two, which is minus 2 and 2, let's take 0 for example. This becomes minus 2, this is plus 2. So a negative times a positive is a negative. So that is not going to work. But when we take values greater than 2, what happens to this expression? Let's say this is a 4. This is going to be 6. 4 minus 2 is also positive. So can you see? It means x can also be greater than 2. That means our expression becomes positive. Then when is it negative? It is negative when x is in between the two values. We saw that. Okay. So... Algebraic expressions. So certain ways, you see, the fuss about factorizations is because you can determine the direction that expression takes when it is simplified. When it's unsimplified, you may have an idea, but it can be pretty ambiguous. And you may not really make um, an intuitive guess, or should we say an educated guess of what is going to take place. Okay, <clears throat> do we have any restrictions here? Not necessarily. <clears throat> Now let's look at this other expression, but essentially that one is very easy, but let's just put it in the way that makes sense. So this is minus x minus 3 all squared minus 2. Now we can see this a parabola in vertex form. So what is the story here? This expression is always negative. You can check, you can put any x value that you want, but usually try to use what you've already found because it may speak some sense into this. For example, this is always greater than or equal to 0. Even when it is 0, we still have minus 2. Let's say this is greater than 0, but because of that negative, it is dragging. It's going to be negative entirely. And with the negative, it's always going to be negative. So we know that this is negative. We don't even have to say a lot. By just inspection. This is why it's always nicer when you look at these expressions. Okay, Because this is always negative. This is always less than zero. Okay? It's either less than or equal to zero. Let me put it that way. Right. Right. So maybe let's try and break it down nicely, guys. Because, I mean, we are teaching you, right? Yeah, man. Let's teach you. Let's not rush. We know that minus into x minus 3 all squared is always less than or equal to zero. Right. Right because this is dragging a negative. So whatever value that would be positive will be affected by that negative. But when is it equal to zero? It is equal to zero when x is equal to three, because that would be zero. Zero multiplied by any number is zero, right? Right. Will it ever be positive? The answer is no. Okay, but we will talk about that. So this is going to be negative when, when x an element of real numbers. It's negative. So that means it's never going to be positive because whatever x value we put there, essentially, it will be negative. Obviously, stating that when x is 3, though, it becomes 0. All right? We can still bring back this that provided x is not equal to 3 because we need to speak about the negative sign this time. All right. Okay, okay, all right. Is there more that we can say? That's it, because it's never going to be positive. So, guys, we've broken down these expressions a little bit. Now, let's do the last one. Of course, guys, I'm just taking it step by step to give you an impression of what is going on. What can we say here? X is literally an element of real numbers, and this is always positive. It can never be zero. This is always positive. Maybe let's put it that way and say this one is forever positive for x element of real numbers. That's all we can have. So we don't have issues. Now that we've put everything, now let's integrate. Let's integrate. Because now this has to speak into the expression given. Now what do we see there? We've got things that multiply each other. 
so we've got this guy multiplied by this guy uh, multiplied by this guy and this is all divided by this other guy so I'm just trying to show you guys how you set up this thing because sometimes when I'm talking about it and you don't see it you probably I'm not gonna get it right so we are saying this is either negative or zero. So we want it to be zero or negative. So when can this be zero, guys? Now we've noted that this dude is forever negative. It's never, and even when, um, okay, maybe I should have made a conclusion that this guy, as a result, is always negative. Because we can see that even when this little expression is zero, the guy still is negative. So this guy is forever negative. That is key. So this guy is fixed. Can you see our problems are less? And the two problems now is these two because they are variable. And remember, this is multiplication on top. And we also know that this guy is fixed. It's always positive. It can never be zero. So we've got two fixed points. Now we need to deal with the variables. So the question is, how do we get this to be negative or zero? Remember, for this to be zero, it means any one of these two can be zero. So it's either this is zero and this takes any other value, this thing becomes zero. So that means zero is to be considered here. Ne? So that means from all of this, we can see that x can be equal to zero because these two, whether this is zero or the other one is zero, when it is like that, the entire expression satisfies the inequality because zero is included. Okay. That's what we can see. Uh, I should not have written into this thing. I should not have done it. Okay, but we can see zero will do. Because any one of these two can take zero. But now let's say this guy is negative. What should this guy be for this to work? Now let's say this is negative. This is negative. It's already going to be positive. So for this numerator to be negative so that we have a less than zero, it means this guy also should be negative. Okay, because when that guy is positive, we run into problems. Everything becomes positive, so it doesn't work. So this can work. Okay. So that means x negative, it means x can be either equal to zero or less than zero. Because when x is less than zero, it's negative. Mm. Okay, this is part of the solution. Fine. But now with this guy, we have a problem. We have a bit of a problem because now we've got critical values to consider. Oh, because see, I'm, I'm taking forever. Eh? <laughs> so we've got critical values, guys, to consider for this dude. Now these guys come into the four because they will affect what happens. So that is fine. We are good with it. But now what happens when X is a two? We need to uh, investigate. Let's say when x is a 2, obviously it's 0, so that works. So we know that x can also be equal to 2. Or x can also be equal to minus 2, because those ones are also included. But now let's say this is less than minus 2. Is it going to work? Now we know that when x is less than minus 2, but greater than, I mean, um, Okay, let's say in between these two values, right? We know that this parabola is negative. And this can be negative when that is less than zero, but greater than minus two. So we can see that, well, x must be less than or equal to minus two. Lying, lying, zero must come first because it's bigger, but greater than or equal to minus two because we saw that that expression becomes negative 
in that regard when x is either less than minus 2 uh, sorry greater than minus 2 but less than this one so can you see already that was the it's it's it's, it's included so we can get this inequality with this inequality we get this setup where this is negative and that is negative so that is good so this is part of the solution so that is the vibes we get <coughs> the next one <coughs> so the next one is all right <coughs> so the next one is i don't know now my throat is starting to act up so we found some solution and we can see it's there obviously exploring these things then for this setup to also be sensible to okay, because that is what we end up needing to find. This is what should be the case. Now let's say, um, what if this one is positive now? Because we need to consider that too. If that one is positive, because this is variable, highly variable. When that one is positive, what happens? It means this guy should also be positive. Because now that setup will also satisfy the inequality. How does that okay? Now we have to explore again. So we already explored this. It's, it's sorted. Now this means x equal to 2. I mean x greater than 2. It speaks with x greater than 2. When x is greater than 2, what is the case? We can see that the parabola is positive. This one. And this is already negative. And x is also definitely positive. So that really answers the question. So we can see that, okay, the other solution says x must be greater than or equal to 2. So where is that solution now? D. So that means our D is the main answer. Obviously, guys, I'm taking time so that you can learn something. I know sometimes this can be easy, can be difficult. So that can be easy cut in Palagash and as we This can be easy. Or difficult. So you choose. But always inspect and decide if this is going to work for you. But it helps to always look at the... Um, it always helps to look at these things by inspection so that you can always maximize on what you can get out of it. All right. So already D is the answer. So guys, inspection, again, if you are smart, I'm telling you this can take you maybe less than five minutes, even less than three minutes to figure out. I'm only taking time to teach you, but you can see here a bit of integration of topics with your inspection can even assist you to really work through this easily instead of looking at it step by step like I'm doing. But I'm just trying to show you that you can still do that, right? Even though you may lose time if you do it like that. But when you integrate this within three minutes, you would have found your answers. So that is most important. Okay. Let's explore step number two, which is the table. Let's say table of signs. Maybe that's the best way to put it, right? Table of signs because, yeah, is it an algebraic table? Is it an arithmetic table? Does, I don't care. Now, with this table, we can see that we've got x. And then the next one was x squared minus 4. The next one was minus into x minus 3, all squared, minus 2. The last one was 3 to the exponent x. But the key factor was that those were the numerators. And they were multiplying each other. And we've got... The denominator alone there. So be very careful of separating structures and find a way of making it to make sense. Now I love this table because it solves your pain pretty easily. So we've got two critical values to consider here. 
we've got that minus 2 there and we know that 0 can be a critical value for the top and then that minus 2 became the dude to consider as well. Okay guys, so be patient with me. If you want to learn, of course. If you don't want to learn, please run away stat. There's no point in sitting here if you're not looking to learn something. We say this binomial, this monomial factor is zero when x is zero. And I don't know about when they zero pa. Then it's always going to be positive after that. And it's always going to be negative below that. Now, this next one, we saw that it becomes zero at minus two. Oh, I wonder about romantic. Yeah, when can in some inclusion, strong it's zero at those values. Beyond this value, we can see that this becomes positive because three squared, for example, is nine minus four. It's going to be positive. In between, we saw that essentially this becomes negative, right? Right, because now you can substitute those values directly into that expression. It makes sense. And here it becomes positive. Easy. Again, check those values. Say minus 3 squared is what? It's 9. Minus 4 is a positive 5. And it will keep on doing that. Because the variable is squared. Okay. This one, if we check values, let's say values less than 3. Say minus 3. So this is minus 3, minus 3, right? This is going to be minus 6 squared is 36 but dragging a negative is minus 36 minus 2 so this is negative for values less than minus 2 when it is minus 2 same thing minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 squared is 25 because of the negative is minus 25 minus 2 so this is negative when we come here between 0 and 2 say for example minus 1 same story minus 1 minus 3 is minus 4 squared it's 16 because of the negative is minus 16 minus 16 minus 2 is minus 18 so that would be negative put 0 there it's going to be 9 but because of the negative is minus 9 and wara wara so this is negative between here you can put 1 same story it's negative you put a 2 it's negative you put a value greater than 2 it's negative so this is always negative the table doesn't lie all right this one, we can see that if we put a value less than 2, minus 2, this is just a fraction, but it's positive. That, it's always positive. Positive. Whatever you put in there, that becomes positive. Great. Now, what are we doing, guys? We are saying the numerators multiply each other over the denominator. So it's negative times positive, it's negative. Times another negative it's going to be positive. Positive divided by positive is positive. Remember here we're doing the division. Then this, because there's zero in the numerator involved, so this denominator will just boil, I mean this value will boil down to zero. Now negative times negative is positive times negative is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. Negative times negative is positive. Because there's a zero there, it's becoming zero. Divided by any number, it's zero. And then positive times negative is negative times another negative is positive. Divided by positive is positive. Because there's zero involved, this one gives us zero. And then here we've got, we're going to get positive times positive is positive times negative is negative. Divided by positive is negative. So where are the solutions? Remember the zeros are included. This is included. So if it is included, what do we do? We shade. But now, which direction? We are saying this is less or equal to zero. So this product, remember this is where the solutions are red. So that quotient there is negative. So it's good. This one is positive, not good. Zero, and then that one is negative. So that is good. So again, it speaks to the same conclusion that x must be less than or equal to 0, greater than or equal to minus 2, or x must be greater than or equal to positive 2. So the answer becomes a D. <coughs> so can you see with the table again, perhaps less than 3 minutes if you are good at it. 
but if you are really bad at it then it can take you a little bit longer all right guys so let's look at our option c <laughs> the graphical method okay so again we said anything that works must be put to work great so if we're looking at this we've got here a situation where we are telling ourselves that we've got a function y is equal to x and a function say f of x maybe let's put it as a function because we want to give some sense into this so we've got h of x is equal to x then f of x is equal to x squared minus 4 and then we've got here say g of x is minus into x minus 3 all squared plus no, no, minus 2 <coughs> okay mask is spelling is here because it's a it's it's a lot of them let's start with these ones so this is the line y is equal to x isn't it it's a straight line with a positive gradient so that's what we have here so nothing really big so that's it i don't know what to say maybe you can say here uh, gradient is positive so i don't know yeah, forget this one guys this is an increasing function maybe let's just say so this is a straight line function that is increasing maybe let's use an arrow to show that it's an increasing straight line what is this this is the parabola it's a parabola and it's smiling because we can see a is greater than zero right okay let me not be in a hurry okay so a is greater than zero i wanted to spend an hour actually guys but now i'm a bit overboard but it's fine this is to make you learn for the next questions that are similar right right but now what do we see this one we can tell that this is a parabola standard parabola shifted down and that means when there's only two terms like that the y-intercept becomes y-intercept is uh, y-intercept is also yo I can go also is also a turning point right right so that is all we have obviously the x-intercepts are going to be plus or minus two because this is a difference of two squares we really don't want to worry too much about that at this point the shape and some characteristics are key here then when we look at this one we can see that this is also a parabola This is a parabola and this parabola is a grumpy face parabola because we see that the negative in front of this perfect square is suggesting that a is less than zero okay but now we've got a minimum value not minimum but maximum value sorry this one it has a maximum value of minus two so this is this means it is always negative okay let's not write too much this simply means this is always negative so it means it has non-real roots that means the roots of this parabola don't exist it doesn't touch the x-axis maybe we can even say that and say it has non-real roots how do we know because the maximum value is negative. For a parabola that has a maximum value of negative, that is a negative number. It means the roots are non-real. There's no x-intercept. 
Okay, so man can be pale actually because they born a lento lemonatifunkela. So if the maximum is minus two, it means the roots are non real. All right, now let's look at the next one. We can see that we can say essentially um, G, maybe we say H, and then we can say P of X is 3 to the exponent X, okay? Now, let me just reiterate this. This whole thing is what? It's a power or an ordinal. It's a power or you can call it an ordinal because there's many powers of base 3. Okay, but this one with the variable there. Now, what is that x? The x is an index or exponent, right? And it should be read as such. Nothing else. Don't say other things. The 3 here is the base. And the base is basically the signature. Signature, signature of the power is the signature. Okay, because like I said, it's an ordinal because three is a base, but we can have different orders or different power orders or degrees of base three, right? Right. Now, look at this. If we look at the base, we call the base B is greater than one, right? If that's the case, together with an A value, now there's an A value, which is an invisible one. Come on, don't go. Now we can see here, if there's nothing written, it means there's an invisible one, a coefficient. That means A is greater than zero. Now this combination says it's an increasing function Cutting Palagax, the turn of the lady who branch. You know, the arm is too quick, man. Increasing function that appears above the horizontal asymptote. Of, of, obviously, a student knows that with a, uh, what you call an exponential function, we often have, in fact, not often, we always have a horizontal asymptote. This is one of the characteristics of an exponential function. Obviously, guys, some mistakes occurred in reading an ordinal or a power. You find colleagues, I'll call them colleagues because they are colleagues of mine in a way, you will find colleagues reading this 3 to the exponent x. They read it as 3 to the power x. This is incorrect. Okay? Obviously, technically, let me just say technically incorrect. Technically, technically. incorrect okay because it doesn't make sense okay maths is something that is existent it may be to some greater extent an abstract idea but it's an abstract idea that is drawn from real stuff okay so this is technically incorrect but it is effectively <laughs> accepted okay it's not correct in fact, if I was to be strict about it, I'll say this is wrong. But I don't have the liberty to say that. But now, how did it happen that people read this as 3 to the power x? What happened? What happened was, when you've got, say for example, 3 to the exponent 1, and then we've got 3 to the exponent 2, and then we've got 3 to the exponent 3. Now, the way that this was read 
in terms of degrees, the problem started with this one. The degree of the power itself or the ordinal. It happened that this ended up being read incorrectly. Of course, this is my forensic analysis. I may be wrong. I don't know. But this is what I think. Because when I try to think about this, why did people even begin to say such things? Then this is a possibility. In terms of degrees, this is the first degree. Power of base 3. Right? Because that's how you read it. This is the first degree power of base 3, which is that 3 to the exponent 1. And this would make this one the second degree power of base 3. Because the degree of the power speaks to the exponent. How you know the degree is by the exponent. Okay? Degree. Or the order this is the first order power of base 3 this is the second order power of base 3 and so forth but now it happened that we decided that we can just choose any variable for the exponent now what becomes the reading here the reading becomes now the x power of base 3 maybe let's say the x degree and if I let different looking as a in color. Now to read this one, we're saying now the x degree power of base three. Like I said, the signature of the power is its base. So that's why you would end up saying the x degree power of base 3. But people didn't like to keep writing the x power, don't, don't. They just say the first degree power of 3 instead of saying base 3 because now this word ended up being negated. So now to always say base 3, so some people started saying probably. This is probably the case. They would just say the first degree Power of 3. Ne? The first degree power of 3. Because I said 3, the base is the signature of the power. The exponent is variable, so it's not a big deal. But what stays constant is the base. That's why it becomes the signature. Now, some people decided to say, now this is the x degree power of 3. But then people started neglecting the degree. They would say x power of 3. x power of 3. Not 3 to the power x. Now some people ended up reversing it now. And say 3 to the power x, which is the problem for me. I thought, of course, let's say my forensic analysis happened like that. When things were started, or things started to be chopped off to try and make it easy. To communicate this much faster problems occurred because when you oversimplify matters there's certain things that get lost in the cracks okay anyway this is just my forensic analysis of why so many people including our colleagues from overseas especially them in the US and perhaps in the middle in the east as well they tend to say three to the power okay it's fine guys Say it if you want, but just remember, this is mathematically incorrect or technically incorrect. Maybe let's put it that way, because technically it doesn't make sense. But, well, it's more like a colloquial language. Think of the correct way, the grammatically correctness of a particular language, like in Corsa. There are certain things you say in a way that grammatically they are correct, right? Right, and perhaps that's the best way. But there are certain colloquial terms that you would say in Corsa, and or at least certain ways in which you can put a sentence, and they are actually incorrect. But they send a message anyway. For example, 
ihlanza obviously izi technicalities zolimi lwabo elingafuna ukusebenza kahle <laughs> but sebayenzeka ngathi indlela kungayo um nelinye gama like impokotho that means the pocket impokotho but abaninzi bazathi ipokothi okanye ipokotho yabona yeah, Again, is it technicalities zendlela nendawo abantu abahlala kuzo bathetha into engekho igqibele seba e culture because even any language English itself when you go to England perhaps they speak it differently to other countries nearby or even within England itself there are different regions of England probably the English is not the same because of geographical placement of people and how they just you know integrate with some other languages that they are exposed to and eventually some meanings end up being lost in the cracks of integrating anyway guys the intention here was not to teach you about powers but i always find an opportunity to say something that's just me being me all right so guys what i was trying to give you was my forensic analysis why people say three to the power this Three to the power that that is just my thought. I'm probably wrong. I mean, you probably are taught by the best teachers elsewhere, who can put up a good fight against what I'm saying, and perhaps it would make sense. But for me to accept it, it would have to really change my understanding of maths. Obviously, I'm not too stiff. If it makes sense, I'll go for it. If it doesn't, I disregard it. Anyway, let's now draw the graphs of these functions and start exploring okay guys there are our graphs drawn nicely again these are things you can do in a moment of course this question may take a little bit longer maybe five minutes doesn't really matter guys if you're choosing the graphical method as you can see the quickest was the table method here the others are a bit silly okay now let's have a look we can see that this graph is positive always positive this one is positive there it's zero zero positive and then negative on those parts this one is always negative okay no matter where we look at it and then this one is zero there it's negative there positive day okay so now we've got to look at our situation again our situation is such that i'm going to use these colors that i've put here we've got um the graph of h multiplied by the parabola which is the graph of f multiplied by this other parabola which is the graph of g right right divided by the exponential graph great and we are saying this must be less than or equal to zero right but we can see that this guy is forever negative it's fixed we can see that this guy is forever positive fixed this is just easy to see from what we have here but the other two are a bit variable so they cause problems so we need to explore them in relation to the others we can clearly see that when the graph of h is zero for example the whole expression can be equal to zero so it's included so that means x must be equal to zero okay <clears throat> and then what happens when x is negative for this one <clears throat> so let's see when x is less than zero for this graph it is negative for x less than zero it is negative but what about the graph of the parabola it's also negative can you see that <clears throat> so it's also negative so when these two are both negative then what happened <clears throat> sorry guys oh my throat is starting to act up 
This is going to be negative times negative, it's positive. This is when x is less than zero, by the way, in this expression. Negative times negative is positive, times another negative is negative. Negative divided by positive is negative. So can you see we are getting that? But is zero included? Yes, it is included because we will clearly see that when x is zero, the entire expression satisfies the inequality. Okay, great. So we can see that our solutions are red from here. What can I use now to read my solutions? Maybe this color. So we can see that zero here is included, right? And we are going that way. But now let's explore what happens when x is minus two. Now when x is minus two, the parabola is zero. So the entire expression is zero. So two is included as a way for the expression. But then let's look in between. What happens in between? The parabola is negative, the straight line graph is negative, so this is the setup. And this is forever negative, so this is good. So in between, we've got a solution here. The bar is connected. But can we go beyond minus two, I mean below minus two? When we go below minus two, what is the case? We see that this graph is, is negative, multiplied by a positive parabola, that's a negative multiplied by another negative, then that entirely becomes positive. And positive divided by positive is essentially not what we want. So this is the forbidden route to take. You can't take that route. So that is out. Let's come towards this side. Is two included? Yes, because the parabola is zero. So the entire thing becomes zero and it satisfies the inequality. Okay. So, <clears throat> when we look in between these two, what happens? We can see that the straight line graph is positive. We see that the parabola is also is negative, sorry. <clears throat> and that's a positive times a negative, that's a negative. Then times this already negative side, then we get a positive answer because then positive divided by positive is positive. So again, this is the forbidden route to take. So we put a cross there. <clears throat> it's a no-go zone. Now let's look beyond two, all the way to positive infinity. What happens? The two graphs, the straight line graph and the parabola are both positive, so that's a positive product. Multiplied by negative, it becomes negative as a whole, divided by positive, so it answers the question. So this is acceptable. <clears throat> so now we can clearly see that technically x must not be less than, okay, it can be greater than or equal to minus 2, or x must be greater than or equal to 2. So that is the solution, guys. So again, depends on the question itself. These questions are graded. You get a bit easy-ish so that you can get into the groove and then you get a bit hectic-ish so that you also test your resilience, your temperament and your accuracy, concentration and ability to perform your gymnastics, okay? So guys, I don't know, I cannot overly emphasize the importance of these three approaches when you are dealing with algebraic expressions. Obviously, other expressions may demand different techniques, but yeah, this is it, guys. As you can see, I took so long just doing <clears throat> a small little thing. Obviously, I could easily have just went about it the easiest way and the quickest way, give you the answers, but will you have learned anything? The answer is no. You get a question similar to this one, it takes you down. But now I can assure you if you watched this video and you appreciate what this is all about, when you get any questions similar to this ones, you are going to take it down. That is something I can assure you. But yeah, that's up to you anyway. Okay, let's move on to the last question, guys. We've got our last one here. So let's see, 28. 
Like I said, guys, in the description, you're going to find this memorandum as you see it here. So you can download it for yourself. And obviously watch the video for more of what I said but did not showcase here. So that you can put this into some very good <clears throat> note for you to learn. Because this is not just a memorandum that has answers you don't know where they come from and all that. This is more than just a memorandum. This is a learning experience if you ask me. Anyway, let's look with we are given sigma starting from n equals 1 of this expression 2n minus 1, ending up at p. <coughs> okay, what are we doing here? It says find. So basically, this means find the sum. But now, again, inspection, guys. If you don't inspect, you're going to die, okay? But certain expressions, you have to couple things together. This one is one of those questions because remember algebra is the basis to a lot of technical maths, if you ask me. Arithmetic is the very basic to all mathematics. All right, now let's have a look. Here, yeah, this is now an integrated segment, which is sequences and series. So you're going to employ all of these techniques. Inspection, graphs whatever, as long as it will answer the question, it works. So now I'm not going to go about it the simplistic way because of time. I need to finish this within these next four to five minutes. Now, guys, let's look at our expression. What do we see there? We see a coefficient of some variable n. Hmm. And there is a constant term. There is a constant term. What vibes do you get? This is linear. Basically, it's a straight line. Graph. And which type? An increasing one. Okay, I'm giving you all the notes, guys, you can possibly think of. <laughs> I like increasing with a linger of one one pella gag, one trial a hampia, handlingly. Because one thing is a knock, I can't grow up a ballaman. Anyway, let's have a look at this. This is a linear, and now if this is linear, this means this whole thing is an arithmetic series. Arithmetic series. Mm. So now we're doing sequences and series. Can you see, guys? You don't need to suffer. But now, what do we know about the coefficient in the general formula or the nth term of uh, the general term of a particular series or sequence for that matter? We know that this is the common difference. It's always the common difference. So. <clears throat> There's a lot you can say, guys. And then what about the number of terms? The number of terms is going to be the last minus the beginning, and you always add one. It gives us P. So we have done our analysis. We've used everything we know. And as a result, we came to some conclusion. We're dealing with an arithmetic series that has a common difference of two. Easy. Done. Now we are supposed to find the whole sum. So what does that mean? We know that Sn is equal to n over 2 into a plus l. Now, how many terms are here? We've got p terms. So this implies that Sp is going to be equal to p over 2a. This is when we substitute 1 in there. We get 2 minus 1, which is just 1. Plus the last term is just going to be 2p because we substitute p for n minus 1. So this is p over 2 into just 2p. Don't forget your board mass. And we just have a simple little thing there of p squared. So what do we get? A. So that is our answer. All right. 
so how else could one have thought about it easy one could easily have said sn is equal to n over 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 times d <clears throat> this implies that sp is going to be equal to p over 2 into 2 into 1 <laughs> plus p because now n is p minus 1 d is 2 can you see p over 2 now we simplify this whole thing into one bracket this is just going to be 2 plus 2p minus 2 handle like terms inside the bracket about mass what do we get 2p steel on board mass what do we get we get p squared okay quick 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 instead of going through the expansion and wasting your time when you are given the general term it's already volunteering what type of a sequence or a series that is and already giving you the common difference which is usually what you want all you need is to find a in the number of terms and deal with the problem okay guys this is all i wanted to share with you for now obviously i thought i was going to be able to do this in one hour but you see most the guy is logoric he talks more than he's supposed to and at times he just creates a lot of controversies and problems for students in the attempt to demystify some technical aspects of the subject to make it more palatable to someone who thinks this is distasteful it's actually very tasty as long as you can appreciate the taste in terms of its smell what does it smell like oranges the texture mm, it's a bit roughish on the tongue this one is a bit smooth you know almost when you can apply your mind to more than just what is in front of you in general you start to appreciate a lot of things than you would if you were to just go about it crudely or should i say carelessly because crudely is in a way the most fundamental way you can look at things and perhaps then by being you know pokey and nosy you start to learn and as you learn you become better and as you become better we will salute you all right guys i hope you've learned something give it a thumbs up of course if you found it helpful and if you thought this is gibberish it's nonsense it's okay to just run away and not leave anything behind or any trace of your presence into this video it's fine um if you think though it's not good for you but what about your neighbor what about your friend what about other kids that probably would need your just like for them to be able to see this video because it becomes popular and therefore they start to see it effortlessly as well because the intention guys is to spread the fire of knowledge to scotch through the fields of ignorance that are all around us all right anyway guys before i say a lot of things that perhaps may offend people let me cut it here i'll see you some other time goodbye